Somebody in our live stream during the game had the perfect description of these Baltimore Ravens and they said if it ain't one thing then it's always another and that's exactly what it was today. The Baltimore Ravens lost to the Pittsburgh Steelers uh, 17 to 10. We knew it was going to be a close game. We knew it could have the potential to be an ugly game uh, but the Ravens uh, yet again they ended up being their own worst enemy. They continued to shoot themselves in the foot. They continued to hurt themselves, whether it be with turnovers, whether it be with missed opportunities. In this game, the, the, the theme to this game was drops. It was drops. The Ravens dropped three touchdown passes, one by Rashad Bateman, one by Mark Andrews, one by Nelson Aguilar. Uh, Zay Flowers had his drops. Uh, Mark Andrews, he had a couple more drops. Uh, and there, there were just drops left and right. Then there was the fumble. Justice Hill had the fumble on the screenplay. Then Lamar, he had that fumble at the end of the game. Uh, and then, there, oh, there was the, the interception too where they did the fade route to Odell Beckham Jr. on that third down after the offense, all second half, the offense just could not do anything. And then they had an opportunity because on special teams, the Ravens, no, the, yeah, the Ravens punted the ball and then the Steelers returned and fumbled it. He fumbled it. And Kevon Seymour, it bounced right into his chest. And it was like, all right, let's go. And he returned it for a nice chunk of yards. The other Ravens, they tried to hold him up, but he was falling. And then he ended up going down. So it's like, all right, Ravens in good position. The least they'll get is a field goal. But we need to get a touchdown. And what happened, they just, they didn't get it. And then they threw the fade, fade route to Odell Beckham Jr. And he was out of position. He just couldn't win the battle. And it ended up being an interception. So you get no points. This game... Minus the defense, <laughs> minus the defense, because defense, I, I cannot put any blame on of this loss on the defense whatsoever, because yet again, uh, just like in the Colts game, j just like in the Colts game, they were out there over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. Offense just kept putting the defense out there and the defense like, oh, here we go again. And the offense just could not get it going. So, again, we know with this Ravens team, we, we've been talking about it for this entire season. Once they get everything cleaned up, and, and, and we talked about this in the live stream, and somebody was like, oh, you're going to be waiting a while for that one. I talked about how once they have a complete game, a complete game, because before it was the penalties, the penalties and then the fumbles. But then in this game, it was like, all right, no penalties. It's like, all right, cool. And then, yeah, Justice Hill had lost that fumble early, but it's like, all right, well, that's the only fumble that they lost. But then, of course, there was the drops. And then the fumbles came back over at the end. And then the offensive line. The offensive line. Uh, Pat McCarry, he and, and again, I, I know T.J. Watt, again, one of the best in the game. We've acknowledged that all week leading up into this game because we know T.J. TJ Watt is like that. Uh, Highsmith, Alex Highsmith, we know that that dude is nasty as well. All right, so we knew they were going to be a problem, and, and we talked about it too, how we expected T.J. Watt to get his, even though I was hoping that he wouldn't. I was hoping that offensive line would hold up, but he was just dogging them all game long, all game long. He was dogging Ronnie Stanley. He was getting beat. Uh, Pat McCarry, he was getting beat, but then he got hurt. Then it was Falele out there. It was Falele out there. So it's, it's crazy because I was thinking during the game, and this is going to be another conversation for another time, but Ravens like really got to start investing more uh, into their tackles because with Ronnie Stanley, you, you never know what's, what you're going to get from him because he's hurt a lot. Um, so you got to have somebody a, a stay ready so you ain't got to get ready type player. And I know Pat McCarry has been that, but then Pat McCarry got hurt. So it's like, oh, man, like what are we doing? So Daniel Falele, I feel like Ravens just really going to have to – ramp up his uh his workload uh just to so he his workload in practice i mean just so he can really be ready to be out there because stuff happens as we see stuff happens and i know the the backup can only get so much practice and whatnot and the backup usually practices with the backups but they gotta figure something out man uh these baltimore ravens are um they can be very sloppy they're still very sloppy uh, now, they are 3-2, and two, so not the worst record in the world, certainly not the best. They had opportunities to go 5-0. and oh. uh, They had opportunities to go 4-1, and one. Um, but they are 3-2. and two. They are what their record is. While they're solid, not great, not terrible, but right there in the middle. They're they a solid team right now. But so many missed opportunities uh, are right there in front of them, and, and it's up to the Baltimore Ravens to just really seize those opportunities, capitalize on those opportunities. Lamar Jackson in this game. He, early on, he really throughout, throughout most of the game, he was playing phenomenal. Even though he was getting pressured, even though he got sacked a couple times, he was playing a great 
game. But if it was up to Lamar Jackson, based off of that, especially the first half alone, but the first, like, two and a half, three quarters, if it was up to – Ravens would have blew this thing out, out the water, man. It would not have even been close. But he can only throw the ball. He can't go catch it, too. And the drops just hurt. They killed everything because Ravens had so many chances to not only get the lead, but extend the lead, get even more points. But they just kept dropping the ball over and over and over. And, and when you keep dropping the ball, you, you let bad teams hang around. And not that the Steelers are this terrible team, but they're not great. But you let them hang around. You let them hang around over and over. And that's what happened. And then they ended up taking off at the end. Um, but then with Lamar Jackson too, uh, with the, 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 the pass to Odell Beckham Jr., the fade route, uh, that was obviously a predetermined play. They knew that they were going to Odell Beckham Jr. I guess if they got a certain look, they were going to try it. And Joey Porter Jr., he said, no, you ain't getting position on me. And he won that matchup. And with Odell Beckham Jr., I, I, I just really don't know what kind of shape he's in. I'm very confused on what type of shape Odell Beckham Jr. is in. Um, because like in, in the preseason, in, not in preseason, in like the practices and stuff, he looked fast. He looked smooth. He was like, all right, OD, OBJ, let's get it, man. But then in the games, it just, it looks a little bit different. So I, I don't know if he's still dealing with something. I just don't know exactly what he is or who he is right now. Um, but we're going to talk about Odell Beckham Jr. and what we expect from him, uh, later on this week. So y'all look out for that. But Rashad Bateman. Oh, man. Rashad Bateman had the, the drop touchdown, uh, and then he had that, that drop deep ball, um, similar to Nelson Aguilar's drop deep ball that he had, too. Uh, right, right, man, the, the receivers just, oh, man, it was bad this game. It, it was a really, 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 really rough game uh, for them today. Uh, Zay Flowers, he had his early drops. Uh, then he made some big plays, but he had the drops, and they were just, they were, they were just sharing the wealth. When it came to the drops, everybody was contributing with drops. Mark Andrews had some too, and it was just rough to see. Uh, and then toward the end of the game with Lamar, uh, where he he completed that big pass that big pass to Zay Flowers is when the Steelers went up by four, I believe. He completed that, then the Ravens got the ball back. He completed that big pass to Zay Flowers. Like, all right, let's go. Next play, he's looking, he snaps the ball, he's looking. Ronnie Stanley just gets beat from jump, like literally from jump. T, again, T.J. Watt is a monster. We get it, but Ronnie, no, was it Ronnie Stanley that got beat from jump, or was it Falele? I forget. No, I forget. What, somebody got beat from jump, and they T.J. Watt came around the corner, pop, knocked it right out, knocked it right out, and then he picked it up. Lamar was trying to hit it out of his hands, and Justice Hill tried to hit it out, but it obviously didn't work. But then the Ravens had another shot. They had another shot to 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 make it happen. Uh, because the Steelers ended up kicking a field goal. Ravens had two timeouts, and Steelers, there, there was still time left on the clock. So they kicked the ball off. They went up by seven now because they kicked the field goal. Um, and then Lamar, it was a nice pass to Zay. There ends up being a holding call on one of the plays, so it dropped them back. But then Lamar ended up getting a nice pass to Mark Andrews. Mark Andrews got some yak. It ended up being third and seven. Lamar threw it to, I think, Devin Duvernay. Pass was on point, but it was a really tough catch for Devin Duvernay to make. Um, so he got hit twice, then he dropped it. And then, um, oh, then on fourth and seven, Lamar was looking, and then he, he just got sacked, man. And you could just see the, the, the deflation from the team. They started this game, and they were elated. They were hyped. They were happy, because especially after they got that touchdown. You ain't see no terrible towels spinning at all. The Steelers, all the Steelers fans were just looking around. But that same look of just – despair and hopelessness that the Steelers fans had on their faces at the beginning of the game that's what all the Baltimore Ravens had on their faces in the second half because just nothing was working nothing was going on um early on the first half the play calling I thought the play calling was great it was fine but there were just the drops but then I remember in the second half there was oh I forget which play it was but there was something weird where I was like what what are we doing uh, and it just felt like the Ravens was just sort of giving up a bit but I don't think they were but it just seemed like that real quick I, I, I can't remember exactly what the play was and, and where it was but um yeah man this game again the, the the drops is my biggest thing to take away from this game and it's something that the Baltimore Ravens had actually been doing a pretty good job of not doing throughout this point of the season thus far but the drops just showed themselves in this game and they showed up a lot and hopefully moving forward they can be eliminated but congrats to the Steelers they got the win 
Uh, they took it from the Ravens. Ravens had it. Ravens had control, but then they 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 lost it very very quickly. Um, Baltimore Ravens got a lot of work to do, a whole lot of work to do, uh, as we know. Um, but once once they get it, like, and health will be a big part of it, but execution will be a big part of it too. Play calling, coaching, a little bit of everything. You know a lot of people have talked about how it just doesn't seem like the Baltimore Ravens are very prepared. They, they, they lack a lot of preparation uh, when it comes to these games. And that, that would be on Haas. But this whole game, it wasn't all on Haas. There was a lot to go around for every single bot. Everybody from Harbaugh to Munkin to Lamar to the running backs to the offensive line to the receivers to everybody. Again, except the defense. I, I cannot put this on the defense at all. The defense has been. Oh, but Marlon Humphrey. Oof. I can't forget about that one now. I almost let you off the hook, Marlo, but I, I have forgot about it for a little minute. Marlon Humphrey, one of the more physical uh, cornerbacks in the game. And George Pickens, one of the more physical wide receivers in the game. He just beat Marlon Humphrey from jump. It was a nice little welcome back uh, for Marlon Humphrey. Well, not a nice welcome back, but, I mean, for the Steelers, it was nice. For the Ravens, it was ugly. But it was a welcome back for Marlon Humphrey. Like, hey, <laughs> George Pickens said, I don't care who you are. I'm, I'm getting this one. Marlon Humphrey got beat from jump, and by the time he turned around, he was already out of position, couldn't do nothing. George Pickens beat him for the touchdown. And that, that was tough to watch, man, because we're not used to Marlon Humphrey getting, like, dog like that, like he got on that play. Uh, so that was just an ugly play well, for the Ravens all around, not for the Steelers. But, um, yeah, Marlon Humphrey was, uh, whew, that was tough to watch. George Pickens had him a day today, and I know, I guarantee it, I know that they're going to be Ravens fans that bring up the whole George Pickens versus David Ajabo, that debate. So that should be fun. This should be a real fun week uh, as a Raven fan because there will be a lot of complaining, a lot of frustration, a lot of questions uh, moving forward this week about these Baltimore Ravens. But it's up to them to give us some good answers next week in London.